So for dinner tonight, I'm going to... Uh, oh, what the... F are you kidding me? How am I supposed to find anything in here? Nope. Nope. Hell no. Not doing this. Nope. 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 So after thinking through a few solutions with the roommate, <laughs> just kidding, my girlfriend hates it when I call her that. Anyway, the conclusion was I'm going to hang these on the inside of one of the kitchen cabinets. Eh, okay, that's not going to fit. Back to the drawing board. We definitely have more height here than width, so this layout just might work. So I'm going to have to be careful because there's a shelf here that's going to get in the way of my measuring cups. Let's mark the outer mold line of this board to make sure all these cups are going to fit inside. Well, okay, it definitely looks like they're not all going to fit above that shelf, so let's go back and see how much room we have left to work with. Okay, third time's the charm. If I line up all the smaller spoons on the bottom and then stagger the big cups on top, everything should fit just right. Yep, that should do it. Okay, on to the next phase. First, let's draw those measurements out. This time I'll use a square so I have nice and clean 90 degree lines, unlike what you saw earlier. This isn't a special piece of wood at all. I just found some board that looked nice at Home Depot. I did avoid the particle board and plywood because it just doesn't look as nice when it's painted, especially on the edges. What I ended up picking up is spruce wood. It's nice and light, which makes me worry less that it's going to just drop off the cabinet door, especially since I'm not gonna be screwing it in. Fun fact, the spruce goose was not made of spruce wood. It was actually made of birch. Spruce goose just sounded better than birch goose. Anyway, let's start cutting. I'm going to use a circular saw because I don't have a table saw yet, and I'm not really worried about making super straight cuts here. As always, you gotta make sure you clamp things down when you're cutting them. There's probably a better way for me to clamp this board down where I don't have to stop cutting halfway through. You'll see why stopping is annoying later, but let me know in the comments if you have a better method for clamping things down in this type of situation that avoids moving the clamp halfway through the cut. Oh, Please don't be broken. Uh, let's check the battery. Oh yeah, of course. That's why you should always check the battery before starting. Luckily, I have another that should be charged. Yup, that looks good. This is that annoying thing I was talking about earlier. You can see that unless you're spot on with the blade, which is probably only possible with black magic or a table saw, then you'll have a lip in the wood. So now I have to take some time to file this down. Okay, let's get the rest of this board cut out. So, as you can tell by the quality of this video, I have no sponsors, but I really love how easy it is to swap the batteries out on these DeWalt tools. I definitely won't ever go back to using cords. Now I have to clean up the edges some more before we get to the painting. I'll also sand down the top surface just to be safe. I used to sand things with just my hand, but decided to upgrade to one of these blocks. Can highly recommend it. You'll get a much flatter surface if you use the block than if you're just doing it with your hand. On to paint, kinda. Actually, stain, we're gonna be staining. So first we'll use some pre-stain, also known as conditioner, which I found out the hard way at the hardware store. This helps prevent blotches in your final stain product. This is actually the first time I'm ever gonna use this, so let's see how it works out. I use a sponge to apply the pre-stain to all the surfaces I plan to stain, including the edges as well. I'll not do the back because I don't really care how the back's gonna look. Onto the stain. So there's nothing special about the stain that I picked. It was just the brand that they had and I liked the color. 
So after I applied the stain, I decided to look up how you should really do it, and I realized I might have done it wrong. Uh, I think you were supposed to let the stain sit on the surface for a while, and then wipe it off with the cloth. The results turned out fine for me, so I'm not upset. And I was pretty paranoid about putting too much stain in any single place. I really didn't want blotches, and I didn't feel like cutting this all out again. Uh, but next time, I'll try it out on a test piece of wood. Maybe the result will be better. I have no idea. Ah, uh, now the part I've been dreading. A big reason I didn't want to just hang the measuring cups up with the command hooks is because then I'd have to print out labels, and I mean labels are great, but that's ugly, and I feel like I can do better. Now my handwriting is terrible, so I'm going to spray paint the actual measurements of the cups onto the board, but I'll need some templates. So off to my computer I go. I'm going for the least amount of edges to cut, so this should get me every combination of unit and measurement that I need. Unfortunately, the one third wouldn't show up in the correct font, so I had to go ahead and trace that over myself. Yup, this was grueling to do. Painting them on by hand probably would have taken less time, but you saw my handwriting at the beginning of this, right? It's awful. Anyway, now that that's over with, on to spray painting. I didn't want something glossy, that just wouldn't have fit right, so I thought this chalk finish would look cool and kind of homemade. Well, it's definitely going to look homemade because my templates didn't work out that great, but you get what I'm saying. The first one I sprayed from far away and that made it look really faded and didn't have very good defined edges, so I started to go closer the more I spray painted on there. If I had to do this again, I would definitely find a way to hold that template paper right up against the surface there, and also maybe tape it down to make it more taut against the surface as well. That would probably give me a lot better results. So after all that hard work, I want to make sure to protect the surface so that the measurements that I just spray painted on there don't end up getting scratched away or fade. So I'm going to apply some clear polyurethane to the surface and the edges just in case things get rough in the kitchen. I don't really care about the back again, so I'll skip that. To hold the cups in place, I found some decorative hooks while I was at the hardware store. To put them in, I'm being overly cautious by drilling pilot holes first. I really didn't want to crack or split the wood at all after doing all that. And I tried the first hook just by pushing it in, and it really wasn't going in. I was having to apply a lot of pressure, so pilot holes, much better way to go. And honestly, it was way easier to screw them in after you drill the pilot hole anyway. Finally, let's get this board up there. To make lining up the board on the cabinet door easier, I'll take the door off to mount the board on there. To mount the board to the door, I'll be using command strips because I have commitment issues. Yeah, I know that that was awful. I'm so sorry. Really, I, I apologize. Anyway, really it's because I have no confidence in my ability to line this board up correctly on the door. There are some tight tolerances because I need to make sure that the gap between the top and the lower half of where I'm hanging the cups up lines up exactly with that shelf. And I was using that Swiss Army knife there to try to judge where I should put that shelf. And it's very crude. It's probably not gonna work the first time. After hanging all these cups up, my anxiety levels dropped in half. It feels amazing. I could finally find what I need, and I never have to deal with that mess again. Nope, that's a lie. I have to go somehow organize the rest of that, but at least this part is done. Son of a, yeah, you see? See, it, it never works the first time. That's exactly why I use command strips. Okay, let's try that again. Perfect. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any advice or tips for me, leave them in the comments. I'm always looking to improve. Anyway, I better get to editing the next video. So until next time, 